All right, so we're back after a long hiatus uh, with Eric. Eric, how are you going? I'm doing fine. How are you? Good, mate. We're going to talk about a bit about confrontation again today because it's been about 12 months, I think, since our last video that we uh, we did together. 12 long months, but hopefully things have been going well in the meantime. Yeah, and before I did like sort of uh, community um, uh, polls and they could vote on which faction we would cover. But I was so disappointed they never covered the um, Tina Bor or the Midnor factions that I thought, that's it. I'm not not doing the polls this time. I'm just going to pick one that we haven't covered yet. So okay. as Midnor is kind of the, the, the like the latest faction of miniatures I've just recently uh, bought from a guy in France, um, very lucky enough to do that and painting them and really enjoying them, I thought we could cover the law for those guys because um, I love the law. I love the small text uh, the sort of like the intro text in the 3.5 rulebook, mm -hmm. how all the, how the Mindor sort of started. And we can go into that um, later on in our conversation anyway. Um, but um, everything being fine with you, mate, over there? Yeah, yeah, everything is nice. Everything is nice and, uh, you know, work keeps me busy. And uh, I try to uh, get what little hobby time I, I have to uh, assemble more models and try to clear up some of that backlog, so... Have you been yeah. doing any painting at all, mate? Have you been doing any hobby-wise confrontation recently? Not confrontation-wise. I've I've been trying to get break back, you know, get back to the habit of painting. I haven't done it much, really. Uh, again, I, I try to do it and motivate myself, but it's I'm generally burned out after a week of work. So, but yeah, I've I've been trying to get back into the swing of things. That's good. Okay, I know that you and Silvana have met. Uh, well, not so recently, but you have met because Savannah is doing his new company now. That's yep, uh, Serenos Studios. Yeah, I have picked up some stuff from Serenos, uh, and I have basically, uh, been, you know, figured we're in the same city. Might as well just drop by and see him and uh, pick it up in person. So we, we did, but yeah, he he seemed to be doing well. Also, very busy on his end, uh, not just with the company, but with his life in general. So yeah, um, hopefully, we'll see more pretty pretty things coming from his direction soon i hope i hope his miniatures haven't been melting due to the overwhelming heat of the summer that we've experienced in the last couple of years because it's getting we, really hot. We, <laughs> before we started recording but um yeah for resin miniatures and plastic miniatures i uh, i fear for them now because grouping yeah. and <laughs> yeah. the ways with the, the heat we're experiencing so far over here, it hasn't been so bad. We had a couple of, uh, we had a week, week and a half of really hot weather and then just cooled back down again. So it's, we've been lucky, but yeah, it's, it's been hot. It's been bad. All right. Well, that's a good way to segue into the news because we are going to go and touch on the news in just a moment. There you go. Excellent. We'll start with uh, Temple of the West. Now, this is Cole Gibson's company. I think he's yep. in collaboration with somebody. I'm not sure, but I, I know Kyle's the main person who's. Uh, posting uh, things online and um, the, the sort of the main person behind this venture in, in bringing back confrontation in some form, in some way. But, um, yeah, we, we've seen uh, over the last few months quite a lot of, of these designs and concept drawings that um, have been coming out and featured online and people really frustrated and say, hey, when are we actually going to see the models? When are they actually going to be yeah. able to kind of thing? And finally, we've seen the... Um, We've seen the fruits of that project come to fruition with a Kickstarter and, uh, well, not really a Kickstarter. I think it was just like a pre-order or something. I think it was a Kickstarter. It was a pre-order. I, I, I have pre-ordered uh, a few things in there because, uh, again, pre-models and they are directly the same style. So they would fit with the old stuff. I figured, why not? Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, everything's going to be compatible with the new you know, continuum confrontation, continuum uh, rules that are going to be coming out eventually. Uh, we don't exactly know when that will be happening, but I know they're in development now. Uh, but they also will have cards that will be compatible with confrontation 3.5 mm -hmm. as far as I'm aware. Um, yeah. So, for example, this this particular design. Of Which is, uh, yeah, it's a journeyman, a journeyman miniature, but at least uh, Temple of West is doing cards for them, which is really cool of them. That's amazing. Like the cards themselves look beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. Exactly. You couldn't tell that the difference between that apart from the Temple of the West logo 
that's in the background there. The other from apart from that, oh well, the 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 um, the stats, the names of the stats being put. Which know. is something a lot of people I know when I've, when I've tried to tie, teach the game, they they always like, yeah, but why don't when we have something you know clearer than just weird symbols? I'm like symbols, you get used to them, but yes, that makes a lot of sense. You will get used to them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But yeah, having them written is always a good thing. Absolutely. Uh, so we've had designs from um, Adrian Gornella. I think that's his name, the main designer. But we've also got some 3D designs as well coming through. We've got some. Uh, great... I think the designs were original. Gary, no, no, they were not chalk. They weren't chalk. Yeah, no, Gary, not Gary, those. The concept, the concepts of Gary Chalk, and um, they were they were the miniatures were designed. By, by Gonella, yes, Adrian. Yeah, yeah, and then they've got some three D designs. So they've got they're coming in from all different angles for getting the miniatures produced and that kind of thing from the concepts. But um, yeah, yeah, they are, and that's it's always beautiful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it's always a treat to see one of those sneak peeks. Yes, for sure. Um, a lot of work, a lot of work's going into the basing and trying to get the bases exactly like mm -hmm. they were from the original rack and bases because people are really, you know, quite. Uh, particular about, about that. The, uh, yeah, they yeah, they are. They are. Um, but they'll, they'll be supplied with round bases and square bases for people who like to base their miniatures on a round base. Uh, yeah. But yeah, go and check it out yourself. It's on Facebook. Um, and uh, check out what uh, Kyle has brought out for Temple of the West because there's so much good stuff in there. Yeah, and, yeah um, it is. So yeah, really, really good to see, and uh, I wish uh, we both wish you know Kyle all the very best with Temple of the West, and uh, we'll, we hope to see a game in some time in the future that we can actually play and experience ourselves. I'm, I'm sure it's coming. I'm sure it's coming. Absolutely. Uh, so if you're interested in that and you want to find out more about uh, Kyle's business, yeah, because he does other things than than Continuum as well, <laughs> he's. That's right. Um, yeah, he does. He does a clash of spears, which is kind of an ancient um, historical, historical thing, yeah. type game. Um, so it looks like there's some gladiators and um, like Romans and that kind of thing in it. Uh, I've seen the miniature of that. That looked pretty cool. And he's got last days, a zombie apocalypse, apocalypse mm -hmm. if I can speak, type yeah. game as well. Um, some Relic Blade stuff, yeah. And, and Relic I think Blade. there was uh, upcoming a Arthurian set for Clash of Spears as well. So, right, okay, cool. I think I saw some of those pics on Instagram when you posted those yep. up. Yeah, but if you want to find more about what uh, Kyle is doing, it's Kyle Starter. <laughs> That's quite a cool one. Um, check out, yeah, check out uh, Temple of the West .co, uh, and uh, find out more from there. All right. Now we'll go to Silvano's company here, yeah. um, Cernus uh, Studios. Um, they're based in Canada, of course, but they do have. They can, you know, obviously, you know, deliver and send all their product worldwide. Mm -hmm. People from all around the world have received packages from uh, Silvano uh, upon ordering uh, goods from him. So now, as far as I understand. Um, Eric, they're all in resin, aren't they? All these models. Uh, everything I've seen so far, yes. I think he might be looking into some. I'm not sure what he's been doing. What he's planning exactly, but yes, so far everything's been resin. Right, and I know that he's planning to do a Kickstarter at some point in the future, featuring a lot of female models and that kind of yes. thing. Yes, but what he wanted to do was one one woman one woman from H. There they go. See the this one would be the the Celts. So they said basically the uh, Kickstarter would be the matriarchs. So it's all a every faction has a each single female model, including the ones that we haven't seen before. So like orcs, dwarves. Uh, no, we have seen dwarves, but we haven't seen mid north dwarves. Uh, no, we have a Zalith. I'm saying some, but yes, uh, basically the. Uh, there will be um, uh, what's the elves, the Akishans. There's, uh, yeah, for example, this one was going to be a, I think, a Druin. Yep. Yeah, he's he's got stuff in the pipeline. It's again also very heartwarming and very exciting to see new stuff coming out. 
uh, since he works with the original artists and sculptors, it's always very in style of the very reminiscent of the original style. Yes, very much so. This this is a pretty amazing looking design, isn't it? Yes, it is. Stefan Simon, so mm-hmm. one of the original designers there from Rackham. It's the original sculptor. Yeah, it's uh, I believe he worked on the Struns. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so Stefan Simon also did a couple of Kickstarters for his own stuff uh, over the past few years, and his barbarians are just, you, you immediately recognize the style. It yeah. is immediately the same, same, same style. And it should, be, should be noted that these are not 3D designs, they're all hand, oh, they're, hand um, sculpted. Old school, old school sculpting, yeah. Yeah, so really, really impressive. Uh, so again, if you want to go and check out what's happening at Cerner Studios, uh, there is a Facebook page and you can contact him directly. He's on Instagram as well, yes. um, but I don't believe there's an external site for this one. Is that right? Eric, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Think no. It's just through Facebook. So, um, but yeah, check out what he's doing there. It's really exciting. The Kickstarter is imminent, oh, yeah. I believe. And um yeah. I really want that uh, female core warrior on board. I think that's just an amazing looking model. Um, I, I wonder what he's going to be doing for the goblin. Yes, we haven't seen the goblin yet, have we? So, we have not. We've uh, seen the minor. I think the minor is actually in his banner. There is a female minor. Yes, there is. Yeah. That's a nice picture, actually, too. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, so we have the undead. Uh, we have the drone, we have the dwarf, the mm-hmm. Celt, a Cadwellon. Yeah, okay. So he's he's getting there. He's getting there. Yeah, yeah no, really wonderful collection. So yes, very, very cool. And even the even the dwarf, the female dwarf is, is like carrying some goblin's head. I think that's pretty cool. Um yeah, very nice. And the, the dwarf model as well is beautiful, and the mid door model is, is beautiful mm-hmm. as yeah. well. So they're all being painted by, you know. Uh, either M- Martin, um, I won't try to pronounce his last name. But... Uh, um, Kabab, yes. Uh, it's either <laughs> Martin Kabab or uh, I think Thierry might have done one or two. Yeah, Thierry, yeah, Thierry did a few, did he? Yeah, from THM um, Studios. Minis, yeah. Uh, miniatures. So, yeah, uh, yeah, really wonderful stuff. So, it's coming from really think, well. I think the Silvano looking one actually might be. <laughs> Thierry? I'm not sure. <laughs> it does look like him too, doesn't it? Yeah. It yeah. does. It does. I was actually uh, the sculptor had decided to have some fun. And as a as a as an homage to Silvano, I actually sculpted the Celts. <sighs> Silvano has always I've known Silvano since my God. Confrontation two almost twenty years ago. Yeah. And he's always played Celts. Right. Yeah. Anything else he played, he always went back to Celts afterwards. So this is this is a nice you know, a nice way of saying thank you. Yeah, he actually looks like a he actually looks like a Celt now. So he does. He, he's become what he loves, and uh, he's he owns every other miniature. So why not own a miniature of himself in miniature? So exactly, he got his dream. Uh, so yeah, that, uh, that's not even he didn't even ask for it. It was basically just a right. surprise. That's, <laughs> that's even better. That's brilliant. Uh, so yeah, great collection of models there. So check out. Uh, what's happening there at Cerner Studios with what Savannah's doing. And, um, yeah, keep in touch and follow that for any news on the Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. Now we'll go to Journeyman Miniatures. Uh, people may have seen uh, these large uh, large busts or large scenic um, sort of diorama pieces based on mm-hmm. Paul Bonner's artwork, uh, classic yep. artwork. Um, so they've got the Howling Pack now, which is an amazing piece. And, and I believe you can actually get them separate as well. So they all oh, fit really? together into a single piece. Yeah. Wow. That's, yeah, because we, we've seen parts, you know, the, the, the previews were, were model by model. So that's not probably the, the best winter is restocked. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I've seen, the paint, I've seen the painted version of, of this being in work in progress, and that's just incredible to look at. Yeah. I mean, it, it, looks, it looks like the actual Paul Bonner painting. Um, it's just on a totally different level. Uh, this is where you reach art in miniature. Yeah, this is, it this is. is it totally know? is. Whereas I'm sort of like a, 
yeah, I really respect the artwork and the time and, and, and the dedication into painting and producing these models. But I'm more of an army painter guy. I sort of just, you know, batch paint units of models and try to look more pretty. But this is kind of a different level. And this is what it is. It attracted is. me to Rackham is just that it's a, they've sort of made an art form out of miniatures. And, um, well, they're, they're non metallic metals where it was so revolutionary at the time. Yeah. Oh mate, I used to tear my hair out trying to get those trying to get those effects on my miniatures. I, yeah. you know, it just, I thought I was almost could give up, and um, yeah, it, it just it just brought a totally different new aesthetic and look and mm -hmm. way to look at miniature painting. Yeah, that's from another Bonner artwork for Rackham. Yep, yeah, that is. Yeah. yeah, it was the uh, the troll, the behemoth troll, or the behemoth ogre. Yeah, it was artwork with the behemoth orcs in there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that was so detailed. I'm sort of looking at the busts and sort of tempted by them, but then it's kind of like I'm a gamer, so I want to play with the miniatures that I paint. So even though I can really appreciate these really large scale models and they look amazing, uh, and maybe it's it's a it's a wonderful sort of display piece. I'd rather have one sort of in 28 mil so I can actually game with it, kind of thing. I'm very much a gamer, so, but I really, really appreciate what these guys are doing, especially for Paul Bonner too. I mean, he can visualize his his artwork in 3D now. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure Paul will be very excited. There you go. There oh, we wow, go. This I've never, I haven't seen this before. This is amazing. Yeah. I might actually get yeah. this. One. It's the yeah. It's the um, it's a display piece for the Minor Court. The Minor Clan actually is getting a Bonner style artwork redesigned, like the everything else they've been doing uh, so they'll be slightly bigger than, than the playable pieces but they'll still be to scale with the rest of the Bonner uh, inspired pieces right yeah, that's amazing uh, they have shown off I think it was the king and the bishop as well oh really okay yeah well I haven't kept my finger on the pulse then with uh, journeyman miniatures I, that's, that sort of bypassed me there uh, this is just an outstanding piece of work um, yeah, <sighs> just the painting level and the yeah, the, yeah, yeah. It's of another world. Um, it's always nice to see what the community can come up with. Yep. It, it, yeah, it's just mind blowing. All right. Fantastic. All right. So we're back, and then we're going to jump into the law of mid -law. So, Eric, please tell yep. us, us with uh, <laughs> with this mid Norian law. All right. Um, so Minor's lore is um, back in the winter of battles, the dwarves retreated from the plains and enter, into the mountains where they found caves uh, to find you to, and sought shelter in there. Uh, the caves in question were already inhabited by strange small creatures uh, with green skin, which are the goblins. And so the dwarves, um, okay, this is where things get contentious. Uh, the dwarves say they brought civilization and, and knowledge and, uh, you know, the regular trappings of everything else to the goblins, while the goblins basically claimed the dwarves uh, basically enslaved all of them. Uh, what we know is that eventually the goblins got freed by uh, listening to a voice that came from the depths, uh, which was Rat, and uh, the, which was a god that led them to freedom. Uh, and in breaking away from the dwarves, basically wrecked a lot of things. Uh, the dwarves decided to make sure that nothing else would come from that same depth. And so uh, a number of dwarves, dwarven heroes, which I believe was either 13 or 14 of them, uh, my memory's a bit hazy on that, went and decided to go down into the depths to see if anything else would come up. Um, at the bottom, they actually found a hydra, which uh, in which they be the engage in battle. Um, they all ran away except for one dwarf, um, which was Menor. The other dwarves say that Minor left stayed behind to make sure nothing would, would you know, to keep guard. Uh, Minor was actually just the last one because everyone else ran away and um, basically cursed his brethren uh, with his dying words. At which point, the um, he basically heard a, a voice as he basically fought the Hydra to a standstill. Uh, the poison, the Hydra's poison, basically slowly killing him. 
and with his own breath cursed the, the dwarves. And at which point he heard a voice that said that he, he could grant him power if he just agreed to it, uh, which is all we know. Uh, basically, uh, Minor, at some point, a dwarf fell down into the crevices and all the way down to the rusty sword, which was left in the middle of a cave. Uh, grabbing the sword, became the new despot, uh, basically got the spirits or mind of... Uh, and and then grant you know grew from there. Um, the truth of it is that the dwarves, uh, most dwarves didn't know about it. There was a small group of them who knew about the Minor dwarves, uh, and they kept it secret, out of shame, and and so on and so forth. Uh, these have been mentioned in one of the Quiet Havoc articles, but very briefly. Uh, I believe the English name for them is the Coal Traders. Something about the coal. Um, I'll just quickly run through because I think there's a question about them somewhere, but not on the Discord. Okay, um, but yes, basically uh, these dwar these dwarves made deals with the um, the Minor so that there would be non-aggression, so the Minors wouldn't attack the dwarves, the dwarves wouldn't attack Minor, but at the same time, they would basically erase any trace of the Minor dwarves. Uh, they were the Turn up or men in black, so you so to speak. Uh, except that eventually uh, the despot broke the agreements and started attacking and basically came out and basically came out and just did this thing. Um, so, yes, Minors are like the dwarves, uh, come from the below the, the, the ground. They are definitely um, subterranean. Uh, they do have a demonic. Influences to them as it's basically a demon bound to a the the, the what's left of the body of the dwarf. Uh, they do rot, as we've seen, as we learn in the Kettlewell and RPG. Uh, sunlight tends to uh, hurry that up, and we also knew that because of the um, uh, the plague bearers. Uh, no, not plague bearers. The um, one of the Minor um, units. Scorch bearers, I think. Yes, the Scorch Bearers. The Scorch Bearers were basically uh, organ harvesters for Menor, which is why they gained the bonuses for a certain target. Their job is to go uh, hunt down the target and basically harvest the organs so that the organs can be grafted onto Menor uh, models, or mo mo models, warriors uh, who have uh, whose organs have, have reached the end of their life because they rot, because they're not alive. Um, yes, the soul of the dwarf they've taken over is still around. It's basically bound in that little doll. Uh, if the doll is destroyed, it also means that the original soul is destroyed, which means that the body can no longer be inhabited, which is why you know, dwarves are very peculiar about their dolls. Um, let's see what else is there. Uh, they have grown and made uh, a spread throughout Arklash uh, with various hives. Uh, the most famous ones of all, they're not famous, but the, the ones we know more about is basically the uh, Azair one, because uh, Azair was a hero. We have a bit of his background in the um, original little um, scenarios that came with him. And then uh, what little we do know again is that he became a Minor leader uh, with the YHD, or however you pronounce it, uh, title in front of his uh, prefix. Uh, he is in Cadwallon. He the whole bit about his uh, storyline uh, is slightly more explained in one of the Cry Havoc articles about the various Minor uh, clans. Basically, uh, he has been installed in Cadwallon. He's been sent to Cadwallon by the Despot as a an ambassador, uh, or at least a, an intermediary to deal with uh, Sofet and the um, the rest of the Necromancers. Uh, what is also hinted at, or at least stated in that article, is that uh, Azair is planning to betray the despot and try to claim his place. Uh, and that's one of the things he's doing in Kedwalan, is that he's basically making an army of, but with the um, the homeless. He's forceful, forcefully converting the homeless into Minors. Uh, they are actually no longer dwarves, which is one of the things that he thinks the despot is kind of wrong about focusing only on dwarves. 
but yes, so one of the questions we've seen, I've seen uh, somewhere is that, uh, quickly, because I know someone asked that question in the Discord about what other creatures had been turned into uh, hosts, and yes, this is one of them. The he as they are, is using humans as hosts and not just dwarves. Otherwise, they will menors have been known to use creatures from the depths. Uh, we've seen them with the incubus. Uh, we've seen them with the larva, but they are they don't do other humanoid races other than the dwarves. Okay, very cool. All right, um, now. We did hint that we have some community questions from uh, people on Discord and on the Facebook. So, mate, um, what questions? Did, what other questions did you get from people on our uh, Discord community? Oh, there we go. Uh, we have Krillian the Archivist, so good old Krill, asking questions about uh, the backstory of... <coughs> Sorry okay. about that. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm fine. It's just a scratchy throat. Uh, so, what is the backstory of Ikthan? The um, that was the center faction. Unfortunately, we haven't had much background about it, uh, other than the single art, single bit describing him in the Cry Havoc fourteen article about the Minor clans, uh, the Minor sub factions, whatever you call them, uh, the colonies. There we go, uh, Minor colonies. That's the slight the only bit where he gets mentioned is there. Uh, he's nicknamed the Demon of the Abyss, but we don't have more details than that, sadly. Um, was he planned to be released? I guess he was as planned as anything else. But uh, a lot of times things get sidetracked with Rackham. I mean, we've seen models and, and troops and characters mentioned in 2nd edition, and they didn't come out until Almost Age of Ragnarok, so yeah. there were no actual there was no actual planning for anything, so we don't have any idea. Uh, I mean, not from the outside in. Maybe if someone had more input on the inside, but yes. Um, so more background about him. Unfortunately, that's all I have is that little bit there. Uh, how far does the abyss extend beneath Arklash? We do know that the various colonies have tunneled to one another. They can actually send out troops to one another. Um, if it reaches Kel, Belgorn, and the other continents, we don't know. I suppose that if Rackham had explored the other continents, we might have had more of a minor presence. Um, but so far, again, big question mark because we haven't seen much of anything else on the other continents. Um, what other races slash creatures slash experimental subjects were made to possess? As I said, um, we have seen the incubus and the larva being used as, as sources. Um, the prowlers seem to be some sort of weird gorilla. I, again, big question mark. I, I guess one artist decided to have some fun. People thought it was cool and got greenlit to do miniatures because we don't actually have more background on what they were, what they were supposed to be. Um, but yes, and we know that Isaiah is using humans in Cadwallon to do the whole thing. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. Uh, that one article about the colonies uh, speaking about that mentioned Isaiah does mention that. Here we go. Um, of all the colonies of Midnor, Azir is the one that changes the most non-dwarven people into possessed. The diversity of its, is a reflection of the city above. Uh, no species is excluded from the rights of creation of the abyss, not even the wolfen or the ogres. Uh, these non-dwarf possessed are called the lost ones. Azir justifies this diversity uh, as for as need for agents and spies. But he also... Uh, he, in reality, he believes that this spot is a fool to stop at only dwarves. So basically, yes, he does. He's the, he's the visionary among the Minor leaders. But yeah, so yes, so that's the one for Azair. Would you want to do one from the Facebook group? Yeah, I, I, maybe we're, we're sort of maybe they crossed over in some cases. We'll have to check. But um, sure. I'll, 
Ricardo D. Uh, Cavalli, he says, um, I have an ob obvious one. Was the despot ever planned to be explained or defined or was it to remain this mysterious and un un um, undefined entity? Um, let alone, was it ever to be a playable mini in the body of the original host or something like that? I, I guess maybe Ichthan uh, as he, he basically it's the colony that is in the, the actual Minor uh, Abyss. Uh, so it's the one that's basically being attacked. It's the classic one, at least as far as it's described. So I'm thinking it's probably the closest you'll have to the Despot. Um, but the Despot itself is very nebulous. Uh, it, I'm not sure they knew exactly where they were going, or if they did, they kind of played it very close to Vest because sometimes it seems like it could be just a, a mind, sometimes it's actually a physical entity. Again, we, we're not quite sure. Um, the menorah, technically a hive mind, but not an all encompassing hive mind. Like each member of that has said, hive mind is still independent enough to be able to act and think, but will actually share whatever information, whatever thought with the nearby hosts, nearby menorah. Um, again, it, it, I, there were changes in the um, the writer's team, and I guess that sometimes that meant things get confused and jumbled. But at the same time, some confusion means it can be fun because it can be explained either way, at least as far as I'm concerned. Um, okay. Yes. Any questions uh, there for us? Sorry? Uh, do you have any more questions from Discord at all? Uh, sure. Uh, what links the uh, oh, the Death Divers, the Doom Divers faction, and the Minor? Uh, the Doom Divers were from the Goblins. Uh, they are the faction of Goblins that seem to be most um, not tainted, but most uh, influenced by darkness. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I've seen much lore. Um, a lot of the clans were basically just one-off ideas. Um, a lot of, of either mentioned here and there, and they kind of try to put that together in a coherent way. Uh, I mean, some of the, the baronies of lions and the, uh, the undead um, houses work better. Uh, the Deer's Labs was very vague. I mean, all of a sudden you have these labs that weren't really mentioned before that just pop up. And then the Min Nor colonies, again, a couple of them made sense. A couple of them were just... A, question marks like they came up with something a cool concept that could have been fun but it didn't get to to be worked fleshed out and i think that's also what the case was with the goblins so unfortunately as much as we'd love to have more details about that it's um whatever article you have in cry havoc about the goblin clans um or the the factions and that's basically what you'll have sadly oh. Uh, and so Drew also asked, what happens to the conflict between the Red Oak and the Minor? How does it end? Um, not sure we know how it ends. Basically, the Red Oak has been sacrificing uh, Sylvan, Sylvan anime to create uh, the, uh, some more ultimate predators in order to fight Minor, the Minor encroachment in the region. Um Unfortunately, I think there was something about it actually helping Minor because it means that there's less spirits to hold them back. But again, it was very much in passing and not anything very detailed. Um, but yes, they, they, the Minor have been a thorn inside of a lot of a few Wolfen clans. Uh, Red Oak was one. The Throne of Stars was another one. Uh, they did uh, do a lot of damage to the clan. The, the actual wolf tribe, wolf and tribe before uh, Onyx regain control. So again, there's some overlap, but not much in there, sadly. All right. Now I've got another question here from our Facebook group here. Gregor, um, he asks, why would the Tina, Tina war dwarves try to block their cousins when they obviously look more awesome? Why did Rackham create the Cadway... Uh, why did the Rackham create the Cadway chess and never include Ephrath? He also, he's got quite a few questions here. Um, he does. He does. Is the king of Ephrath trying to dominate all of the other uh, colonies? 
is the link with the Dispot stronger with mutations or with the number of canopy dolls? Okay, so Greg, um, for those of you who don't know, Greg is actually a former Rackham employee. Oh. He's basically asking this just to 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 mess with me. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is the man who actually used to answer questions um, way back when at the conventions. What he'd do is that he would actually have a, you know, a Q&A with uh, players. <clears throat> so core members and players would actually get to, to hang out with him. And he would do, each person gets to ask a single question. Right. He talks about and it. Of course. Yeah. And that's, that was Greg. Greg was the one who actually gave those, those, uh, those really question, you know, answers that just lead to more questions. Right. So him asking questions <laughs> now is just him, you know. So, so from the bottom of my heart, Greg, <laughs> from the bottom of my heart, Greg, <laughs> but yeah. yes. <clears throat> um, so the Cowboy Chess was basically a uh, alternate game that Rackham had come up with in one of the Havocs. It was like a couple of pages long. It was <clears throat> based using a set of Cadwall models. It had its own set of rules and everything. Wow, okay. <clears throat> the fact that it, it came out in Cryhavic 17 uh, or 16, and it didn't get to, basically it was one of the last issues and the, which didn't make it to English. Right. Sadly. Uh, it has been on my, my list of things to do if I ever have some free time. And I do have some free time coming up, so I might actually get a chance to do that um, and translate it for the community. It was a simple game. It was, you know, it was nothing like confrontation, but it was fun. It seemed at least fun. And yeah, having more more than one faction could have been a lot of interest. You know, could have been interesting, and especially since they actually had a chess set. So yeah. that's Greg being annoying as heck as usual. <laughs> Good on you, Greg. Last one. Uh, yeah. Uh, the other questions are basically just questions that were of uh, a lot of, of decisions made from his uh, from the, the business standpoint, like what sold, what didn't. I guess. <coughs> Again, I figure he'd know the answer better than I would. Yeah. Especially that at that end. Uh, for the canopy dolls and the mutations, uh, we haven't seen that much mutation other than a couple of mages. I mean, we have Mahal, which has who has tentacles, and that we don't have much. Um, so I'd say probably more canopy dolls would be closer to the um, to the spot. Mm. You have more souls. You have yeah. You basically are, have more concentration and focus of of the attention of the spot. I would I would say again, this is at this point. This is the kind of you know hair splitting questions someone would just throw in my way to, to mess with me but yes yeah. yes I love you Greg <laughs> All right. uh, so on the discord side of things we have more questions mm -hmm. um, Drew asks what is the uh, Epona, Eprath colony doing after being freed from the, Minor, the shackles of Midnor so the Eprath colony is the colony from the uh, the clan box it's the one that's currently uh, as your background Right. The beautiful, beautiful models. Um, basically, their 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 scenario was um, two of the demons of the colony. Uh, basically, the uh, demon that's in inhabiting the king and the one that's inhabiting the queen are looking for the third one because it's the Trinity of the the Abyss, which is basically the um, a demon who was meant to inhabit the priest. Uh, they are seeking him out. Uh, the whole scenario like slash campaign was basically them finding a trace of where it was hidden because it had been uh, the three immortal the three immortal demons basically had been um, imprisoned by mortals. Uh, there's an article about that in Cry Havoc four, I believe, or five, uh, which explains a bit more what the the whole immortal thing is about. Uh, and the, the whole demon thing. Um, basically, uh, when the mortals, uh, the immortals on Arklash can uh, can influence, can uh, can retain power, but they need belief in order to be there, kind of like smaller versions of gods. But it also requires them to have uh, their names, uh, their, their true names spoken, 
So, which is one of the reasons why it, the more the name is spoken, the better, the, the more power they can draw. And since these have been, the, the three demons of the Trinity have been imprisoned uh, and all traces of them basically erased. And their names have also been altered so that their true name can't be spoken. Uh, they're trying to find where the priest is. They're trying to also regain power and, and help the, uh, the, the the demon soul or the whatever possessing spirit have the, uh, the, the ability to go back to the priest. Uh, they find him or to find a soul uh, imprisoned on a old temple made by um, griffins on and the um, fangs of fire uh, islands which is basically a, a bunch of uh, volcanic islands off the coast of the desert uh, the Sahara, Sahara desert and in it there's a single old Templar uh, think Indiana Jones and the, uh, the the Last Crusade style, who's kept there, who stayed there, and who's still alive after over four centuries, uh, to keep guard and keep watch and make sure that the the one demon does not get out, and that is their shadow, which was Vedath. Uh, so basically, the scenario ends successfully if, if with them killing Vedath and freeing uh, that one last demon to create the Trinity. We don't really know what happens then. Uh, we have a mention, a quick mention, in the of the Aparath colony in the colony uh, article in Cry Havoc that mentions that uh, all contact with them has been lost. Uh, as the, when the third uh, immortal basically got freed, it broke the link. It severed the link to the spot, so they are free to do whatever they want now. So what are they doing? We don't know. Uh, we suppose from the, again, a lot of questions. Uh, from the article in Cryovic 4, 5 about the, uh, the Porath colony, it seems like they would want to, uh, again, reestablish worship of the uh, the various demons, the, the three demons to actually regain power and probably uh, reclaim territory, land, and their former places. So Probably doesn't quite align with the despot, but I suppose it could maybe work with it. At the moment, the despot is trying to hunt them down and bring them back into the fold. So, again, that's a nice little hook for whatever future Menor intrigued it was going to be. Nice. Okay, mate. Yeah. All right. So, Henley Kop uh, Kopok, he asks, what's the relation between Menor, the despot, and the Hydra? Are they all different aspects of the same thing or something else? Okay, so Minnor was technically the dwarven demigod who got sent, who, who was left behind by the others and who died at the Hydra's hand. The Hydra was the creature, I guess, the, whatever god was inhabiting or whatever divine being was inhabiting, uh, which made a deal with the dying Minnor to have his revenge on all the dwarves. The despot is the, I guess, the amalgamation of the, the new dwarf with the mind of Midnor and the power of whatever immortal being was driving everything. So it gets jumbled, it gets confused. Uh, but yes, the Hydra would probably be more like an emblematic creature uh, it also has some interesting symbology about the whole cutting off heads and, and them going back because every time you seem to get rid of some manure colony, there always seems to be another bunch of them somewhere else. Um, and they also seem to be sneaking around, getting everywhere. So, But no, there is a difference. Uh, the spot is basically the de facto leader. Um, maybe not so much as a physical presence, but as a mental tug on all Menor. Right. Okay. Nice, but any more Discord questions there at all? Uh, yes, Drew key has a couple of more questions. Uh, we have uh, the if Sankurun's colony isn't used in a lot of lore. Uh, do you know if there's ever any plans or any chunks of story about them? Unfortunately, we don't. What little we have seen of them is in the Minor Clan article. Uh, that lists a bit more, gives a bit more detail about the various clan, clans, but that's pretty much it. The colonies, sorry. 
but that's pretty much it. We don't have more of about them than that, sadly, uh, which is really sad because it could have been a really cool one. They were basically the mage hunters. Right. Uh, yeah. So that's our just to make sure I'm not saying something silly. Um, Sakurun. Uh, yes, he's a Dean of Menor, Tentacles, yes. Uh, yes, so if you are quite curious, on Cry Havoc 14, page 39, is a nice little inset that's with the title, The Colony of Eparath is no longer responding anymore. So, yes. Um, yes, so yes, the Senkurun, Senkurun colony is actually a bunch of mystics, so... Yeah, it could have been very, very interesting to see. Mm -hmm. But sadly, we don't have that much information about that. Right. Um, so that's it for San Karun. And he mentions that in uh, Cryophic 2, the Minor is exhumated from his tomb after the Battle of the Pillar. Battle is mentioned again in Cryophic 14, but nothing new is revealed. Uh, the Battle of the Pillar was... I'm just going to go through over it quickly. I believe it was more of a, um, a Ragnarok demo, so I guess it was just to show off the various rules, not so much importance. Uh, uh, yeah, it might not be Menor itself, but I believe, oh yeah, from what I can see, it's mainly a... Um, so as mentioned in one of the earlier graphics about the... Oh, maybe it was... Yeah, it's one of the early, later graphics uh, about the Ephora colony. Uh, Minor as the despot. Minor. The despot itself has been trying to track down various immortals and bring them to, to grow his power, which is why he freed the, the colony and is uh, trying to bring them back. Because uh, the more and the more he can leech off their their power, the more he grows. Uh, so I'm not, not sure it was actually Minor itself. I think that must just be uh, sadly, the translation, the way the translation worked, but it was clearly the tomb of immortal, an immortal of some sort. Uh, I will go over this again, and I will eventually uh, try to track down a bit more information. But yes, it was just a question mark and probably a random or at least an unknown immortal. Okay. All right, we've got one last question here from Diffy Anthony on our Facebook group. Sure. Uh, what is the backstory of Yich? Kathan, if that's how you pronounce Kathan, it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how far does the abyss extend beneath Arklash and does it yep. reach Hell, Belgorn, or other continents? And what other races, creatures, experimental subjects are made into yep. zest? So, yes, that was, that was Krill on the Discord, and that was the first question I got. So, right. yep. Gotcha. Okay. So, so, thank you very much, uh, guys, for asking your questions. Do we have any more questions on Discord? Is that a, is that a wrap then? That was. It uh, wonderful. Well, I think maybe this is the biggest response we've had for any of the factions so far. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, big thanks to the community coming back and um, supporting um, uh, Eric and myself in doing these kind of war chats. Um, I don't know what we're going to do next, but I really like to see T Tina Bor uh, come because no one votes for Tina Bor. I don't know why. I don't know why. Tina Bor were one of the factions <laughs> that did not sell. That's right. that's. Okay. Wow, that really? has been. Yeah, I absolutely love them. Yeah, so if you don't. They're yeah, very so. pretty, but yes, apparently it was one of the more unpopular factions. So that might be why. That's good. I always t tend to pick factions that no one likes, so that's good. I, I quite, I'm quite proud of that. Yeah, so that's good. <laughs> okay, Eric. Well, I want to thank you very much for your time yeah. today and uh, for your experience and expertise in Midnor. Glad I could help. I know it's not that. Hopefully, you know, we can. You know, there there seem to be more people picking at the lore, so we might actually have more answers eventually, and that could be fun. Great. Okay, mate. Well, uh, until the next one, take care of yourself and yep. uh, see you, you then. Too. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please check out our other battle reports and other interviews with Eric, all related to the confrontation lore and the game, uh, on our channel here at the Crown of Command. Thanks very much for watching, take care, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.